Welcome everyone, bonjour tout le monde. Thank you for joining me in this session where I quickly explain you how you can use MicroStream project to have faster access to your data. In any kind of application, I guess, um, you have the Java objects within your JVM with your methods, with your data, and externally you have your data in a database table or uh, in any other kind of data source. So that means that you always need to retrieve the data and that you um, need to access them, that you need to query them, that you need to map them to your JVM ob objects, to your Java objects. I'm Rudy de Busser. I'm working for uh, MicroStream as a developer advocate, but I'm also involved uh, in the Java enterprise world. Uh, so um, has which has to do a lot with the data. Uh, so MicroProfile and uh, Jakarta EE. You can find there my Twitter um, handle and the um, blogs which are right for the moment, uh, the MicroStream one and my personal one. Data is everywhere. Uh, if uh, I guess if it's uh, not an application that is, is using any kind of data, then it's not a Java uh, application or not a Java enterprise application or the use uh, the usefulness will be very limited. Can be all kinds of um, areas uh, from manufacturing uh, for um, following up the stocks and 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 the um, flows and the um, planning up to some websites, uh, the classical websites where you, um, the web shops where you buy some stuff and uh, then you do the checkout, even health data uh, with all these smartphones and the smart apps these days. So data is crucial. That's pro probably also the reason why you have like 100, 300 different types of solutions to store your data. So it's a massive amount of uh, solutions that you have. But all of those solutions, um, I mentioned already a database, but all of those solutions, um, they store data externally to your application in some kind of format, which is typically for that product. That can be tables with, uh, with, with uh, rows and fields uh, for a database. That can be um, JSON, uh, that can be a graph database, that can be key value stores for the NoSQL. All those solutions for data storage have one thing in common with what you need to do. You need some kind of mapping because it is not Java that you store there. It is the proprietary format way of storing the data um, for that solution. That also means mapping that you need to do converse, uh, converse data conversions. You need to write queries to retrieve the data, uh, etc. That means that a large part of your application that the developer needs to do is write that orange red block there, which is that object relational mapping, that data conversion, that query um, time. That can be a large part of uh, the time that the developer spends on it. And it's also, uh, in uh, some cases, the, um, the cause of many performance issues within your, um, within your application. You probably need some kind of, uh, if. I'm talking about Hibernate, uh, some Hibernate expert to really tune every query and see that it uh, runs optimally. And there is a typical term for that. Uh, it's the object relational impedance mismatch. Uh, you have a mismatch between the Java world where you have ob objects with a lot of uh, rich features, a, uh, a lot of data types, a lot of um, possibilities to navigate from one uh, type of object to another. And then you have the, um, uh, the database where you have a limited set, um, where you have only those, uh, those two fields where you, for instance, uh, if you have master detail relations, you only have a link from your, um, from your detail to your master, etc. So there is a mismatch and yeah, we see that people, um, trying to make the best of it, of course, because that is the solution which is available, which is not a bad solution in most cases, um, but there can be easier things. Because what if we think about what it should look like if the data are part of your application? 
Java ob object, they have variables. So if you decide that those variables are your data, and then you have your data and your um, methods that perform, uh, that work on that data are together. That's easy, that's uh, simple to do. So the idea of microstream was then, what if those Java instances are the database, not some external system? That means that you can query through getters, um, that you can use a stream API as query language if you like uh, to, to write some queries, then you can write them in stream API. Ult ultra fast, no conversion needed, which means that it is not only an increased developer productivity, but also at production time, it goes faster. And of course, when your process restarts, we need to uh, keep the data somewhere. So the microstream uh, product has uh, what's called the next generation Java serialization engine, which stores your object graph, so your, your, your Java objects in a binary format somewhere externally so that it can survive your process restart. And it is loaded again when you start up your process. So not only within your JVM you're working with Java objects, but effectively you store those Java objects also externally. That can be a disk, that can be a file, a file system, a, a directories and files, but it can also be the database because some customers said, hey, we have those databases, we pay for it, so let's make use of it. So they just store it as a blob there, a binary large object, and then they can easily um, do their backup, what they were used to. But that can also be something external that can be even uh, event stream systems like Kafka that can be, um, that can be cloud uh, storage solutions. Wherever you can store a binary object that can be um, the source and the target for storing your Java objects. And it is a relatively new product, so it was uh, open sourced uh, a year and a half ago around, uh, around that time, but it's already quickly picked up by a lot of frameworks. So for instance, the Helladon, uh, uh, the Oracle guys in integrated it within Helladon, uh, Helladon SE and MP version and the MicroProfile version. Um, two or three weeks ago, the Micronaut team also uh, released um, a version, uh, the 1.5 version, where uh, MicroStream is integrated within Micronaut. And there are also integrations for uh, Jakarta CDI and MicroProfile Config for the Jakarta world, but also Spring Boot and Quarkus is, um, it can also already be used, but there will be specific integrations uh, later on this year. Quickly dive into uh, some of the aspects, uh, how you can use it as a configuration. So it's not a standalone product, it just is a um, Java artifact that you add to your application. So you can add it as a dependency to your application, for example. And then the developer basically needs to configure three things. That um, is the storage, where it is stored. That binary object can be a directory, as I said, a database or a cloud storage. Do I need a backup? So is it uh, also stored at the second place uh, in case of that there is something wrong with that first storage uh, place? And the number of uh, channels, uh, a channel writes uh, the data in that binary format. If you have um, a lot of data or you have uh, a high throughput, then it might be a good uh, case to consider more than one channel so that you have um, two or four or even eight threads that write those uh, data and process the, the data to your external system. How does then maybe a hello world look like? Um, you would first decide which object is uh, the root object. Uh, we need a root, ob root object as a starting point of that object graph. And the system will traverse that entire root object to find everything what is linked to it and will able to store that. You create that storage manager, as I said, uh, the location and, and all those other things. And then you start it at you start that, um, storage manager. At that point, data is loaded or lazy loaded, as I, we will see in a moment. And you can use it within Java itself. The find product then can be any kind of Java. You don't need to queries. You don't need to, to do mapping. You get the product. You change the name. And then, of course, you ask the manager to store it again because it needs to be um, available next time. So that means that um, it only changes a store. This changes a bit like Git that stores only um, the changes and 
Um, based on all that thing, it can reconstruct your entire object. But as I mentioned, starting up your uh, data is not all the data because you cannot load four terabyte data into memory or that's not recommended at least. So you can have, for instance, um, create a map where you have a lazy list of orders, which means that the orders are not loaded, but only when you access the um, dot get method from that lazy at that point, the orders are loaded from the external system. If you're done with it, you can uh, use uh, the clear method of that same lazy class, or you can just do nothing, and then eventually the garbage collector will clear up that lazy because the, those are weak references. Another point of that um, serialization engine is that you can do type mapping. Your data model evolves, new, new variables, um, maybe entire refactorings. When you just have another variable and that it is fine that it is initially NOLL, then you can just start it up and um, that variable is there. You can, um, of course, do that larger refactoring and then you need to tell the system uh, what is the old uh, structure, what is the new one, and how is the mapping between them so that at load time, the storage manager can um, convert the data. Can stay in the old format, but from the moment then, of course, when you save that object, it will be in the new format. And even a mixture of some objects in old and new, uh, that's all possible, uh, that can uh, be handled by the engine uh, without any problem. I mentioned already those supported storages at uh, the open source version, which is available on GitHub and on Maven Central, can handle uh, the uh, file system and the um, Postgres and the MariaDB database. The other storages, uh, like you see on the slide, uh, like the Oracle database or the MySQL, uh, Kafka, um, Hazelcast, uh, Redis, and cloud storage like S3, and um, Microsoft Azure Cloud Storage, they are part of the Enterprise Edition. It runs wherever, it's pure Java, so it runs wherever Java runs. That can be on a desktop, that can be in a cloud, in a container. You can create even a Graal VM native image out of, out of it uh, with the uh, correct configuration, uh, you can create it there. Uh, it runs on Android, so it is um, a possible replacement for SQLite for offline data storage. Only requirement is that you have JDK 8 or higher, so typ typically 8, 11, 17, or um, those kind of versions. You don't need to program in Java, uh, but it's a Java, so um, native lang uh, Java, JVM language, so Kotlin, Scala, Groovy, and Android can all be used uh, in combination with the um, uh, with the framework. We are now experimenting even uh, with the Graal VM and the, the Truffle uh, loader so that maybe you can also use the other languages. The open source version is a single node version, so that means that um, clustering, you need to do some extra work. It is possible in the open source version, but you need to do something manually where we can provide you, where we can help you with a few methods and classes for that. But in the upcoming microstream cluster, then you have a, a clustering cap capabilities which will work on Kubernetes. Microstream cluster can be installed on top of that, and then your application uh, will be aut automatically uh, sending out the required events uh, throughout the system, and then your changes are propagated and distributed automatically uh, throughout all the instances of your cluster. It was very short. Quick introduction, I had, did not have the time, of course, to do a lot of demo and go into details, but do you want more information? We have a booth here, so come by um, and have a chat this afternoon. This is the website, uh, Microstream One. You can find there a lot of references uh, to our um, user guide, uh, to the GitHub, etc. And we also have, uh, we also look out for uh, questions which come on Stack Overflow with the tech microstream. Thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoy the last half of this conference. <laughs>